God, as we study your word, that you just uh, make it alive within us. And Father, as it becomes alive, that God, it bears fruit in our life so that our, our life can be a testimony to you without even saying a word. Just on how we, we live each and every day. Father, may you correct us today. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 22, it says, Flee the evil desires of your youth and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace, along with those who call upon the Lord out of a pure heart. Now, <clears throat> we looked at what it meant to pursue righteousness and faith and love, and, and now here we are on peace. And what, what does this word peace really mean? Well, um, I know some of you are about to get a kick out of this, but I'm going to try to pronounce this word in its original language, and it's called arene. And it, why I say that is because this particular word means so much. It, it's not a simple meaning of what the word peace is on how we, we think of peace. There's actually, this encompasses six different types of peace. And just for your benefit, I'm not going to, you know, it, you know, go into great detail on all six of them, but um, I want you to know what they are. And, and trying to figure out what this word exactly is and try to just give it a simple definition and what it is, it means this. It means, it means wholeness, a complete wholeness and well-being in all areas of life. So what peace is, it's a complete wholeness and well-being in all areas of life. Now, in that all areas of life, he goes, in, he goes into great detail of what this is. And if you're taking notes, you can flip it on the back, seat, uh, back side of the paper there where you got some room. Because I'm going to give you the six areas real quick about what this piece is talking about. And when Paul was saying, look, Timothy, Timothy, you need to be pursuing peace. And when he used that word right here, he was talking about more than just a peace that we, we get from God. Uh, the, the first um, aspect of this peace is its uh, national tranquility. It means to seek out peace um, with other nations to keep from going to war, to re restrain from the, the rage and the havoc of war. In, instead of uh, going so quick into war, seek out peace. Try to find a, a, a peaceful uh, solution. Not only that, if a war is going on, try to you know, make an armistice, you know, a ceasefire, so that there, there could be peace, because where peace is at, then good things come out of it. And so that was just one aspect of it, it was national tranquility. And, you know, it's, it's kind of funny that I believe from the very beginning, even up till you know, right now, there's always been a war and, and wars going on in the world. You know, I, it's, a, it's kind of a special day for me. I, I have my high school football coach and a great history teacher with us today. And I remember sitting in his class, and when we was going through history and studying, I, I remember just thinking, what war am I going to be involved in? Because I, you know, I wasn't the sharpest knife in the drawer, but I was smart enough to figure out that every generation has a war. So what was my war? What was going to be the war that I was going to have to fight? And, you know, lo and behold, I went to it, and, you know, I, I served and, and everything in that war. But it continues to go on. But right here he's saying, look, guys, war's tough. And if you've ever been in war, you know what I'm talking about. It, it, it is ravaging. It's, it's, it's hostile. It's not a safe environment. And there's no peace inside war. And so seek out peace. Seek out peace. Don't go to war so quick. The second definition is this. is It's peace between individuals. Peace in between individuals. And that, that, that's so important for us as a body of Christ to really uh, grasp is to have peace between one another. Amen. Number three is it's uh, security, it's safety, it's prosperity, and it's felicity. Now, I wish Doug was, or not Doug, but Dwayne was here because I, I had to go back and look at some of this. How many of you know what felicity is? It's happiness, right? <coughs> you might be like me and you, I didn't know what it was. I had to go look it up in the dictionary. But it means happiness. And He's saying here to seek it out. Why? Because where peace and harmony are, he says where, where, where these two exist, it keeps things safe and prosperous. 
when you have peace and harmony in, in uh, whatever situation, it's going to bring um, safety and prosperity. And we need that. Now, the, the fourth thing that this word peace here is, is it's the Messiah's peace. It's the peace of Jesus Christ. And there's only one way to get that, and that, that's through trusting in Him as our Lord and Savior. Jesus is the way that leads to peace. <laughs> Number five, it's uh, peace in Christianity. Uh, peace in Christianity, what does that mean? It means that, you're, that you know you're assured of your salvation. You know where you're going to go when you die. And so being secure of your salvation, knowing that you, you, that, that, that you rest because of what you trust in, you, you place all your faith in Jesus Christ, and because of that, you have peace in knowing where you're going to go when you die. <laughs> Which leads to number six. But we've got to have the peace, the assurance of our salvation. Why? Because that assurance of our salvation leads to contentment in life. It leads to contentment in life. You know, we talk a lot of, about, you know, hey, Paul even says, look, we need to learn to be content in all areas of life when we have much and when we have little, right? He says we need to be content. Why? Why? Because it brings about peace. And here's a side note. If uh, you can't walk in the God kind of love like we talked about without having peace in your life, did you know that? You can't do it. Because without, the, the absence of peace is envy and strife. And where there's envy and strife, it opens the door to every evil thing. Huh? That's kind of scary to think about, right? So do you have peace in your life? I don't know. But if you don't, you need to be pursuing peace. Number six is the peace after death. Where, where, where you, you know where you're going to lie when you're gone. It's, it's being with our Father for eternity in heaven. Now... That's going to be the greatest peace that any of us ever know. Because when we get there, it's going to, I can only imagine what it's going to be like when we're there. A total peace. No war, no sickness. Amen. How many of you are tired of being sick? Huh? Amen. I tell you what, I have moments throughout the week where I feel really, my voice comes back and I get to say like four words and then it goes away again. But... You know, I'm just I'm sick and tired of this stuff. But this morning, instead of going, you know, in, really in great detail in, in every one of those areas, there, there's three that I want to pinpoint this morning so that we can uh, apply them to our life because I, I think they're really crucial in our Christian walk that we have a good understanding about what this peace is. <laughs> that does it, don't it? Number one is we have to have peace in our relationships with others. We have to have peace in our relationship with others. Look at Romans 12, 16 through 18. It says, Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everybody. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. As far as it's possible for you, live at peace with everyone. Man, sometimes that's hard to do, isn't it? To live at peace with everyone. Because, you know, going back to what we talked about last week, man, I tell you what, when people get under your skin, it's just hard to be at peace with them. Look at Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. It says this. It says, Make every effort to live in peace with all men and be holy. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. So now we, we, we're, we're beginning to see a better picture of why we are to live at peace. It says it right here. Without holiness, nobody will see the Lord. Huh? The last verse I want you to look at is 1 Peter 3.11. It says this. It says, he must turn from evil and do good. He must seek peace and pursue it. And so once again, here, here we are with this word, pursue peace. We got to go after, we got to chase after, we got to, you know, 
have that as a target. We're, we're going after it. It's, it's the bullseye. We're aiming for it. We're, we're chasing it with everything we have. Peace with others. Why? Because without peace, nobody's going to see God. Now, think about um, the church body for a moment. All right, any church body that you want to pick on, right? This morning, I'm going to use us because this is where we're at, right? If there's not peace inside the body, if we don't have peace with other believers inside this local body, but yet we, 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 we take division and discord and we take it out there and we start talking about things out in the public, right? Do people see God in that? No. Our job is to live, at, is to live at, as Christians. And here we are. We're a fellowship of believers. We gather together. We worship together. We seek God's face together. Therefore, as a body, we need to live in peace together. Now, on a broader scope... Now, we know that the body of Christ is much bigger than just Believer's Chapel, right? It encompasses a whole lot of other churches, a whole lot of other believers. And, I, and, and we need to live at peace with them. We need to be peaceable towards them. They need to see something that's inside of us that draws us that call upon the name of the Lord, draws Christians to Christians. He says, as much as it is possible, live at peace with everybody. Why? Why? Because when they see the peace that we have and what we share, it's going to draw the lost and the sinner to Christ. But if they don't see peace, they don't see uh, that love that we have for the other brothers, they're not going to see Jesus. They're just going to see this, what everybody always likes to say, you know, they're just a bunch of hypocrites. Well, yeah, that's true. We are. We are a bunch of hypocrites because not, any, not, not one of us will always do exactly what we say we're going to do. It's just the facts. Right? It's just the facts. But as much as it depends on us, we need to seek out peace with everyone, especially inside the body of Christ. Not only that, you know, we need to seek out peace in our homes. We need to seek out peace in our home. So many Christian marriages and so many Christian households, you know, they don't make it. Why? Because there's no peace. Either the husband's mad at the wife or the wife is mad at the husband, and all of a sudden now both of them are mad at the kids, and there's, there's just all kinds of uh, strife going on in the household. And we wonder why there's a, such an a increase in divorce among Christian people. Marriages. 52% of all Christian marriages end in divorce. That shouldn't be. And the reason why that is is because there's no peace in the home. Right? They, they, they've stopped seeking peace. They've stopped seeking God. And when you take your eyes off God and you, you stop pursuing God and you stop pursuing this peace and you stop pursuing love with your spouse and with your kids, all of a sudden you're going to have this messed up stuff in front of you. And it ends. And it ruins a lot of different things. So we got to seek out peace in our church, in our homes. The second point is this. We need to seek out peace in our life with ourself. So you can't do number one without being at peace with yourself, can you? There's things going on in some of our lives that nobody in here knows about. There's struggles that are being fought right now inside your very own body that, you know, you, you just, you don't want anybody else to know. You don't want to talk about it. You just want to internalize it. And, and there's no peace inside of you. And if there's no peace inside you, then there can never be peace outside of you if there's not peace inside of you. You know, peace is a, a gift of the Holy Spirit. It's a fruit of the Holy Spirit. And yet we're not choosing to walk in peace. Because we're, we're, we're allowing ourselves to fall to, to circumstance or whatever's going on around us. Look at Psalms 4.8. It says this. It says, I will lie down and sleep in peace for you alone, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. Now the psalmist here, he, he says this. The only reason that he can lie down and, and, and sleep in peace is because he knows. He knows. 
that the Lord makes him dwell in safety. How many of you have ever had a sleepless night? Anybody? Was it because you was real peaceful? Hey, you know what? I know some of the peaceful times, most peaceful times in people's lives are right here on Sunday morning, right? Because when peace settles in, the eyelids go down, right? <laughs> Amen? Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Huh? Ain't that the truth? Huh? When you're at peace, nothing's bothering you. Man, you can fall asleep like that, right? When there's no peace, man, you can't go to sleep no matter how much medicine you take. Huh? It's the truth. Peace. You need peace in your life. You got to have it. Proverbs uh, 1430 says this. It says, a heart at peace gives life to the body. Huh? A heart at peace gives life to the body. But envy rots the bones. Now you understand why you can't sleep. Now you understand why you can't stand certain people. Now you begin to understand why it is that you can't walk in love. You begin to understand why you're having trouble living a Christian life. Why? Because this this aspect of peace is null and void in our life. And when it's gone, we feel defeated. We feel discouraged. We feel beat up. Why? Because this envy that's inside of us is starting to rot our bones. And you know what? It's starting to take its toll. It's starting to take its toll. we got to do something about it. Paul right here, Timothy, he, he's very clear on what he says. He says, pursue peace. Pursue it. Because without it, it's going to be terrible. It's going to be bad. It's going to be envy. It's going to start rotting your bones and you're not going to know how to live. You're not going to remember how to act. It's just going to be a constant turmoil in your life. You know, going to, uh, trying to be real medical, but if, you, if you're without peace and you worry a lot, you know, you know what you begin to develop? Ulcers in your stomach. Did you know that? Part of it. I'm going to pick on coaches right quick because y'all are right here. Why in the world do they chew so much Tums on the sidelines? Huh? <laughs> There is no peace sometimes in certain situations. So you've got to eat those antacids, right? Or something. Or maybe tie your shoe a little bit. Pick some grass up. Huh? Yeah. We've got to have peace in our life. I don't know about you. I don't know what you're dealing with. I don't know what sickness you're, you're facing. I don't know what adversity is in your life. But I'm telling you right now, before you leave here this morning, pursue peace. Ask God to give you peace. Why? Because He gives it to us. Amen? The third thing is this, is we must be at peace with God through Jesus Christ. That's the only way that we can be at peace with God. Jesus came and He died on the cross to bring us peace with God. And when His blood covers our sins, we... we, we we get to enter into this peace that God has for us. Look at Romans 5.1. It says, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Why? We've been justified through faith and have peace with God through Jesus Christ, through the blood of Jesus Christ. Philippians 4, 7 through 9 says this. It says, and the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Jesus Christ. Now we can stop right there. There's two things I've talked about already. What will peace do? It will guard your heart and it will guard your mind. The two things that, are, that get so mixed up in our life that causes so much pain, heartache. And it, verse 8 says, Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, Whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Don't think about all the 
the, the junk going on. Think on these things. Verse 9 says this, And whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, <clears throat> put it into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. Now, <clears throat> that was Paul talking once again because his life was an example. He lived at peace. He was content with his life. He, he didn't care how many times he got mistreated. He didn't care how many times he got uh, whipped or, or shipwrecked or been sick. He was, he was at peace in knowing it of who he was in Jesus Christ. And see, once we know who we are inside Jesus Christ, that's why John 17 is so important. Once we understand and once we know who we are inside Jesus Christ, there is a peace that overtakes us. There's a a song that says, there's a peace I've come to know, right? Though my heart and my flesh cry out, It's that God kind of peace. It's the peace of Christ that will settle your your heart. It will settle your mind. And it will allow you to start walking in love. I can't, I can't. Colossians 1.20. I'm, I'm about done. And it says, through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether the things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. I don't know. I don't know about where you stand today or where you sit today. Maybe you've, you've asked Jesus to, to come into your, your life, to save you, to, to fill you with his Holy Spirit, but yet something has happened. And something has came in and and has taken that peace that you once had and it's as far from you now you feel like as the day before you even accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. There's just no peace in your life. I think today if we begin to get honest with ourselves and look at our own situation in our own life and ask ourselves this question, do I have peace, this God kind of peace in my life? And if you don't, if you don't have peace in your life, I want you to take a few moments and you need to pray You need to pray that God fills you with His Holy Spirit. That He takes away the, the, the very issue that's causing you to be unsettled, to be outside of this, this love and this peace of God. To take it away I and mean, to fill you full of His peace. Because when His peace comes, There comes joy. Maybe some of us haven't been joyful in a long time. Why? Because you don't have peace in your life. You can't be loving because you have no peace in your life. Some of us parents were snapping off at our kids too quick. Why? Because we don't have any peace in our life. And some of you kids don't know how to act because you have no peace in your life. A lot of things going on on that outside control that you may or you may not be able to to contribute to. But there's one thing you can do. You can pursue peace. And you can walk in peace. For no other reason to let our lives shine forth and to be an example of Jesus Christ to the lost and hurting world. If we can't do it inside our, our home, if we can't do it inside of our church, we'll never be able to do it outside these walls, outside your own walls. He didn't call us to be a lot in here. He called us to be a lot out there. So we need to get grounded in His peace. Amen. Let's bow your heads.